you took away the sins of the world singing unto Jesus yeah giving you the praise that's due your name giving you the praise that's due your name to sing and worship you, giving you my heart in praise and worship for your glory and honor, in praise, and come on, somebody worship the Lord, find some words, grab a melody and sing it out of your spirit, man, right now, yeah. scriptures if P if peter's shadow could heal people what did jesus's shadow do <laughs> well it's probably close to one and the same but because <laughs> peter was flowing in the anointing which is the topic of the day the anointing the lord's anointing breaks every yoke the lord's anointing today's stream un to the Lord and for you guys as we're a part of a, a deeper worship community and intercessors. <laughs> the Lord's anointing, it breaks every stronghold and every yoke. It breaks all oppression. Oh man, it feels so good. His anointing, the Lord's anointing, breaks all bondage, relieves every burden releases every burden god the anointing of the presence of the person of the son of god jesus walking around these walls i thought by now they'd fall you have never failed me yet waiting for a change to come knowing the battles won or you have never failed me yet walking around these walls Lord Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting 
for a change to come. Wow. Knowing the battle has already been won in you, you have never failed me. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me. I know you've never failed me. again like you did in our, our early 20s, God, you'll do it again because you're the signs and wonders and miracle working. This is not over. It's not over yet. Woo! I know this night won't last. And I know this night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praises over and over again. Jesus, you're still enough. Wow. So keep me within your love, Lord. My heart will sing your praise again. I know this storm won't last. Yeah, yeah. And I know this storm can't to pass the promises my heart will sing your praise again and Jesus you're still enough and keep me within your love my heart will sing your praise again still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you never fail me your promise still stands your promise still stands on your 
promises are still standing today. Your promises help me in every way. Your promises are still standing yet today. I said, I said, your promises are still standing today. I follow you in every way, Lord. Your promises are, Jesus, you're more than enough. Jesus, you're more than enough. Check it now. I've seen you move. You move the mountain, and I believe I'll see you do it again. I see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way. And I believe we'll see you do it again. You made a way. <laughs> and I believe I see you do it again. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe. I see you do it again. You made a way, Lord, where there was no way. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. Faithfulness. I'm still in your, I'm still in your hands. This is my call. singing to the Lord with all your heart and strength and mind. Come sing unto the Lord. Come see the doings and the great works of the Lord. Stop praising. 
I won't stop praising your like eagles and they'll run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint what three or four powerful promises in one singular verse Isaiah 40 verse 31 make sure we give the reference for new people or if you're just coming on Isaiah 40 31 but those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength They'll mount up with wings like eagles. Yeah. They'll run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon you, Lord. As we wait upon you, Lord. As we wait, uh, strength will rise, strength will rise as we wait upon you, Lord. Wait upon you, Lord, while we're waiting on you, Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon you, Lord, as we wait upon you. Our God, you reign for strong deliverer our God you're our God you reign forever and our hope our strong deliverer 
and I'm teaching during these streams this, the, the most profound points the Lord has given me. I mean, it's hard to say out loud, man. 47 years of ministry, Jesus. I started June of 1974, if we do the math on this. I was actually spirit-filled Easter night of 1974. My secretary, Lynette, looked it up. She goes, Kent, that was in April. And two months later, I was up leading worship. My friend Ron Tucker said, hey, we heard you play guitar. Come on up. Jump on the Saturday night youth team, youth group. <laughs> the worship team, that's really breaking the rules because um, 
don't raise up a novice in the church lest it go to their head and their heart and they get really messed up big time. <laughs> but I've been leading worship since June of 1974. And it's amazing because when I did the math on it, Carla and I got married in June of 1975. We've been married 47 years, if you do the math on that. And um, I'm just super blessed, man. And today, looking through my notes, the Lord's anointing, I'm going to give you two scriptures that will blow your mind. Some on this stream, you may know this today or you may not. But the first one that changed my life at a super high level was 1 John chapter 2, verses 20 and 27. So get ready. But you, Y-O-U, have an anointing, an unction from the Holy One. What? Verse 20 says, you have an anointing, an unction from the Holy One. One of the greatest things I have to defeat when I teach uh, anytime on a worship weekend or Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon when I do worship training you know, it could be five to 20 different churches represent their worship team, could be 50 to 100 people. Isn't it funny? Everybody believes they're not anointed, but their pastor is, their elders are, uh, their friends are, the guest speaker, guest worship leader, guest singer. Everybody's anointed but you. Why is that? Because the devil's trying to trick you. You say, oh, I got idiosyncrasies. I'm still working on stuff. Yeah, we all are. But you... Kent is declaring today <laughs> as a godfather and a grandfather you have received an anointing accept it receive it know it I'm thinking about Janny Grind's book a female worship leader way back in the day out of Tulsa wrote a book called appointed and anointed I think I have it in the right order actually you could do those in any order and that would be fabulous. You're called by the Lord. You were anointed by the Lord and then you were appointed to your mission. So those two are probably invertible. <laughs> called, appointed, and anointed. No, appointed comes second in her with her book. I'll never forget it because, again, the greatest thing I have to defeat in people's thinking and their heart is everybody else is anointed but me because you don't know me. And it's a personal story. I was leading worship on Saturday night. I mean, it was fabulous. Um, Holy Spirit came, people getting healed, three-hour meeting. We started at 7, get out at 10, sometimes 10.30. And people would come up and say, Kent, you're so anointed. And I, I was thinking, I, you know, I would smile and say thank you. And then i go, well, you don't know me. And I messed up in this area and that. And, and the Lord finally rebuked me. Yeah, the Lord had to rebuke me personally and go, you're anointed. First John 2, I'm going slow. I, I love these little breakdowns that we do here on these days on the stream where I'm doing teaching because I'm not in a hurry. I don't want to be in a hurry. I don't have to be in a hurry anymore. <laughs> and I can't be in a hurry to get this point deep into people's hearts. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have, an anoint, you have an unction from the Lord Jesus. The very anointing he carried, the person of the Son of God, is now in you. Whoa. Lord, are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. It's right here in the Scripture. So 1 John 2, verse 20. But you have an anointing, an unction from the Holy One. Then it says, you know all things. And as a young believer, I found this in my 20s, or early, my, probably when I was 20 or 21. I said, Lord, I love you so much. You know that you saved my life. But how, what does this mean? You have an anointing, an unction from the Holy One. I love that. And you know all things. You know, Lord, I don't know all things. Pay attention. You know, I, I said, Lord, you know I don't know all things. And he, re, he re responded to me. And he says, Kent, You'll know all things when you need to know them by the anointing of my Holy Spirit in you. <laughs> the Lord jumped the system. I'm blocking this off thinking, I love the first part of this, Lord, pretty cool. 
and you, you, you know all things. Lord, you know I don't know all things. He goes, oh, no, you'll know all things when you need to know them by the revelation power of my Holy Spirit. Somebody shout on here, hallelujah. It's really good. <laughs> so you'll know all things when you need to know them by this anointing that indwells you. Wow. Besides, you hold your anointing from the Holy One. I really love this. This is the Berkeley translation. You see, I'm, I'm holding an anointing. I, I love how, you know, if it were a little canister or like the li little tube at the bank, we're, we're, we're holding a, a canister of the anointing. No, it's inside of you. You hold your anointing deep in your spirit, man. Besides, you hold your anointing from, you have your anointed. You're anointed. The Lord said, don't leave it, Ken. I'm not. You've been anointed. You have an unction. You've been anointed with oil from heaven as a giant gift to proceed through this life led by this anointing, the presence of God and his Holy Spirit. Man, that is so good. I got to keep moving, though. Verse 27. But the anointing which you've received of him, again, stop right there, You've received an anointing from him, from Jesus, the Redeemer, the Savior. But the anointing which you've received of him, it abides in you. And again, you need not that any man teach you. Again, I stopped there in verse 27. I went, Lord, you said, don't forsake the assembling together of the saints in the book of Hebrews. Now, how does that lie in parallel to this? He goes, oh, yeah, don't forsake the uh, the gathering together of the saints. They met daily in the book of Acts. They were praying with devotion. They were going house to house, taking communion, and they were listening to the, the apostles' teaching. He said, you don't need for any man to teach you anymore because my anointing, the power of my presence and my Holy Spirit will show you, will teach you what you need to know when you need to know it. You know, this is my example. I love this example. Guess what? The underground church is going to have how many conferences this year with the greatest speakers from America or from around the world? And, you know, the best worship leaders. Gonna, no, they're, they're not having a conference in the underground church this year. Those poor people, all they have is the anointing, the presence of Jesus and the Holy Spirit that will lead them and guide them into all the truth. See, you, that's why young believers, I mean, they're a little weird or a little crazy sometimes, but they count on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes young believers are more like engaged or tuned in or walking the pathway because they know this scripture and they're just un allowing the Holy Spirit to lead them every day. We got to go back to this. The reason I'm teaching this today is multifold, but where are the spirit-filled believers led by the anointing? by the power of his presence and his Holy Spirit, they're really all three, one and the same, led by the anointing. Man, this is really powerful. So we have an anointing from the Holy One. Thank you, Lord. The anointing of the Holy Spirit will cause you to, to know all things in time. And this one right here, you're a spiritual holding tank or reservoir for the power of the Holy Spirit. It's at the end of verse 27, but this same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is not a lie. Even as it's taught you, you today are abiding in him by the power of this anointing. Man, that's so good. And so we're spiritual reservoirs. People say, oh, Ken, could you, if I woke you up at three in the morning, could you lead worship? I said, absolutely. I don't flinch. They go, how is it? I said, because I have the anointing that breaks every yoke, and it's not about the natural. It's about my heart. I'm carrying an anointing. I could pick up my guitar at 3 a.m. in the morning and take off leading worship. It doesn't make any difference. And then some people, they rehearse all week, and they get all messed up and discombobulated and can't lead worship on Sunday morning or do a really poor job. That's because you're relying on your song list and not the anointing that's on the inside of you. Man, this is really clear today. It's so good right here. So check this out. And th this is out of um, uh, the message translation. Actually, I think the first part's a passion. 1 John 2.27 says, But they, the Antichrist, are no match for what is embedded deeply within you. Wow. 
Say it again. I will. But they, the Antichrist, and the Antichrist spirit that's out in the world are no match for what is embedded deeply within. I have something embedded deeply within me. It's called Christ's anointing. I've been anointed. An unction from the Lord has been put on me and in me. And it says Christ's anointing in the last. So you don't need any of their so-called teaching, the Antichrist spirit or the Babylonian spirit or Babylon spirit, Jezebel spirit. And here it is. Christ's anointing teaches you the truth on everything you need to know about yourself and him. See, the truth of God is uncontaminated by a single lie. Oh, powerful. It continues. This is the message translation. I don't use it very often. I'm very careful when I use it because it's not a true translation, but this says this. It's a transliteration is what I'm saying. Live deeply in what you were taught. Please, somebody out there somewhere, would you go back to your original first love and the first teachings that, that were so deeply embedded in your heart? Live deeply in what you were taught. Live deeply in Christ. Live deeply in Christ every day. I'm calling spiritful believers to come back to being led by the Holy Spirit, not just being filled with the Holy Spirit. If we had Holy Spirit, Spirit-filled believers actually operating in the Holy Spirit every day, we would see more salvations, more fruit, more blessing, more generosity. We would see so much rely on the anointing he put within you. Now, one other thing before we close out this stream and I go back to worship. Isaiah 10, verses 20, 24, and 27, talks about the anointing that breaks every yoke. I learned this years ago, and it was major. It's actually, these are the two parallel scriptures, New Testament, Old Testament, 1 John 2, 20. These are massively important to every believer anywhere on the planet. And then the second one, Isaiah 10, I'm going to read 27 first, then I'll go back and read the other ones. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the fatness or the anointing which prevents it from any longer going around your neck. The anointing will be destroyed. The yoke will be destroyed by the anointing of his abundant prosperity. Young's literal translation. So Isaiah 10, 27, think about 2, 27 and verse, uh, chapter 20 or chapter 2, 1 John. Verses 20 and 27, same verse, obviously different book of the Bible. The yoke will be destroyed because of fatness or the anointing of oil, which prevents it from any longer going around your neck. People go, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the anointing. Let me do this. If you go back to verse 20 in context now, it will come about that the remnant of Israel and those of the house of Judah, two important groups, the remnant of Israel, which are still serving God and doing holy sacrifice to the living God, to Jehovah Yahweh, and those of the house of Judah who have escaped will never again rely on the one who struck them, that is the king of Assyria who defeated them, struck them, but will truly rely on the Lord and the Holy One of Israel. Wow. Are we truly relying on this anointing and the Lord Jesus day by day? It says those, the remnant of Israel and the house of Judah, this is verse 20, Isaiah chapter 10. The remnant of Israel and those of the house of Judah who have escaped will never again rely on those that are outside the Lord who struck them. But they will truly rely on the Lord himself, the Holy One of Israel. Verse 24. So thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, do not fear the Assyrians who strike you with a rod and they lift up their staff against you the way that Egypt did. So the king of Assyria has them in bondage. They're underneath the rod and, you know, being oppressed. And then we get to verse 27, because it will be in that day that his burden, the king of Assyria's burden will be removed from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken because of my anointing. Oh, God. Let it sink in. 
because of fatness, the translations are divided, or almost in half. The yoke that the king of Assyria put on your neck, Israel, remnant of Israel and house of Judah, will be broken because of fatness. It actually means by my divine prosperity, you started prospering under my anointing, and you grew so strong, you burst the burden, the yoke from off your neck that the king of Assyria had put on you, and they couldn't put it back on. You went free. Because of my divine prosperity, my anointing breaks every yoke. It broke the yoke right off of your neck. The yoke will be broken because of fatness and other translations. Say the same thing. It will be broken because of his anointing. Isn't this powerful and profound? So even on your worst day, you've received an anointing. Walk in this anointing that he's given you. You have an anointing deeply embedded inside of you. So live deeply out of this anointing, the unction of the presence and person, the person of the Son of God, Jesus, has given you his anointing. And then one last thing. In, in Psalm 92, and you're going to have to think on it, study on it a little bit. You've been anointed with fresh oil. Here's an Old Testament scripture, a precursor to what New Testament believers would actually know and be a part of. Psalm 92, verses 10, 11, and 12. But you have exalted my horn like that of a wild ox. You have exalted my strength like that of a wild ox. Psalm 92, verses 10, 11, and 12. The horn here is the emblem of great strength, excessive strength, and stately grace. It says, I've been anointed with fresh oil. Oh, my God. God revived me and my failing strength by anointing me with fresh oil. <laughs> wow. I've been, you have been anointed by the Son of God with his very own presence and his Holy Spirit with fresh oil. God revived my failing strength by anointing me. Now this is precursor, Psalm 92, telling us what will come even in the New Testament. So it says this in the Moffat translation, I am refreshed by your blessing anointing. And my eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies, hallelujah. The righteous man will flourish like a palm tree. This word flourish, F-L-O-U-R-I-S-H. Flourish is just a gigantic word pregnant with meaning of how to blossom, how to flower in the Lord, how to grow vigorously, all these definitions, how to succeed, a thriving state. The righteous man will be in a thriving state like a palm tree because of the anointing with a fresh oil. Even today in Israel, when the oil comes in, olive oil, perfumed oil, whatever kind of oil it is, they rejoice, celebrate, dance in the street because the olives have ripened and they've come in again. You've been anointed with fresh, perfumed olive oil from the Lord himself. Woo, I believe something. I believe it. I, I mean, I've been operating in it, probably, like I said, for over 45 years. Well, I, I learned to lead worship within that anointing that's within me. I don't lead worship because people are in a room. I lead worship because he saved my life, a life, and I have an anointing. I carry an anointing from the Holy One, and I operate in it, even at, at the quick shop, even at Circle 7, uh, praying for, with people at a gas pump. It could, it could be anywhere. Operate, follow, and be led by this anointing on the inside. And it says, you'll flourish. Say it out loud wherever you're at. I am flourishing by the anointing of the Lord. I am flourishing every day. And again, the words that come, you're blossoming because of this fresh oil anointing. You're growing vigorously because of this fresh oil anointing. You're succeeding and thriving at a high state. I love that, flourishing. I'm flourishing like a palm tree. My strength is restored because I've been anointed with fresh oil. 
your anointing rain, Lord. Anointed. Even the psalmist declared it and said it. What a day. Now study both of those, 1 John 2, 20 and 27. And Isaiah 10 is the unfolding. You always see the precedent was sent many times in the Old Testament, preparing us to understand. See, the anointing of oil was there at the coronation of a king or the wedding of a king. Think about that. Isn't it beautiful? We love you, Lord. It's awesome. A fresh oil anointing. I love you, Lord. I'm praying, Father, in Jesus' name, raindrops of heaven, anointing, rain falling from heaven, full of revelation, come over us now, Lord. Anointing rain. It's raining in the sanctuary of your heart. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. This of fresh oil anointing Jesus from you. By your presence in your person and in this anointing, we live every day. We live deeply in what we were taught, the power of your anointing.
it's deep in our heart we hold this anointing and I'm and I'm flourishing because of you Lord I'm flourishing because of this fresh oil anointing from you Lord I'm flourishing Psalm 92 buddy yeah Lord I am flourishing because of you here I am blossoming again growing vigorously blossoming in you prospering of you fresh oil anointing I am flourishing because of this fresh oil anointing from you I'm flourishing yeah. I said I'm flourishing because of this fresh oil anointing from you I am Flourishing every day, day by day, week by week, and month by month, I'm here, anointed. Receive my anointing from you. Wow. I can't do much more than that. You can watch it over and over again. Get the scriptures and deepen your heart. Let us be led this anointing every day, every minute, every hour, day after day. Awesome. <laughs> wow. All right. God bless you guys. I'll see you real soon. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks for your financial support. Here we remain two and a half years later still doing the Word of God in deep worship and intercessory prayer. God bless you guys.